Another Day, Another Castle. And this one is a special one. Literally one of the reasons why I begged Ian to go to Kent on our anniversary trip. I really wanted to see Heaver Castle, not only because it's beautiful, but also because it has a moat and also because it was Anne Boleyn's childhood home. So I'm looking forward to seeing this picturesque castle and learning more about its history. Come along. This is the King Henry VIII pub near Heaver Castle. It has been open since 1597. Look at these borders of magenta flowers leading up to the entrance to Heber Castle. I feel like it's a very appropriate welcome. So is a mommy duck and all of her teenage ducklings. I think we need to feed them. They were going in a perfect line until they ran into a big fish. Okay, now what are you going to do? Are you going to hop up? Ian started throwing seeds into the moat for the ducks, which the family of ducks found very exciting and also brought the fish around as well. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, those are big fish. Oh my goodness, they're really pretty. Oh yeah, now that the ducks are out of the way, the fish get to come eat the seeds. They're beautiful. They're orange and yellow and white and black spotted. These ducklings just came across the bridge of the castle, out of the castle gates. It was amazing. Ian loves feeding animals, so this was his chance to feed the duck family seeds from his hand. Are they pecking you? Yeah, and of course, I had to try my hand at it as well. <laughs> they have such cute little beaks. <laughs> We didn't get to feed them, but I have to point out these lovely white doves, which were also by the moat. Heaver Castle was built in 1383 and has been home to numerous owners from 12 different families. The most famous, of course, being the Boleyn family. The reason that we're able to tour this beautiful Heaver Castle today is thanks to wealthy American William Waldorf Astor, who purchased Heaver Castle and its estate in 1903 and went on to renovate and preserve it, hopefully for generations to come. Those of you who are familiar with hotels in New York City, yes, this is the same Astor as in the Waldorf Astoria in Manhattan. William Waldorf Astor had such a deep interest in Anne Boleyn, he was determined to return her home to its former glory. He invested huge amounts of time and almost a tenth of his $100 million fortune into renovating the estate and building the castle's collection of historical artifacts. This is the inner hall. The whole ground floor is really preserved in the way the Astor family had it and does not reflect what the castle looked like during medieval times. Here's one interesting story of something that happened here in Beaver in July of 1922. John Jacob Astor and his guests had just left their cocktails for an extravagant dinner in the Great Hall. The Astors entertained many distinguished guests here at Heaver, but this party was about to change the future of the British monarchy. Almost 400 years after Anne Boleyn decided to accept the marriage proposal of King Henry VIII, here at Hever, Elizabeth Bowes Lyon was also visited the castle to make a historic decision. Like Anne, Elizabeth pondered whether to accept the proposal of a soon-to-be king, this time the future George VI. This visit in 1922 to Hever was pivotal in Elizabeth's decision to marry the future King George VI known as Bertie to his family. Elizabeth had already declined two marriage proposals from him. Still, both Bertie and his mother, Queen Mary, were determined that Elizabeth was the one. Only one week before Elizabeth's visit, Queen Mary herself visited Hever, no doubt planning the intervention that would soon happen here. Only a year after Elizabeth's visit to Hever, she and Bertie were married. Elizabeth and Bertie returned to Hever in 1929 as a couple. Elizabeth and Bertie's eldest daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, also frequently visited Hever Castle throughout her life, the place where her mother finally decided to say yes to her father's marriage proposal. This is Astor's drawing room. Oak paneling, 
inlaid with bog oak and holly. Elizabeth, Duchess of York and Prince Albert, Duke of York, came to visit in 1929 and signed the Astor family guest book. This is the Astor's library and the ceiling is a copy of Hampton Court Palace. This portrait over the fireplace is Johann Jakob Astor. He is the rags to riches story behind the Astor family, a poor German immigrant who came to New York and made his fortune in furs and real estate in Manhattan. These locks were installed when Henry VIII visited because he brought his own locksmith to ensure his safety whenever he went anywhere. Shown here on the back wall are depictions of King Henry V and the Black Prince, whose grave we just recently visited at Canterbury Cathedral. In 1922, John Jacob Astor purchased the Times newspaper, and every year they would host a Heaver Day, and he and his wife would have all the employees come to Heaver Castle. This is a photo of one of those occasions. I'm really excited about this exhibition currently on display in Heber Castle. It's about Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn, two of Henry VIII's wives. And particularly interesting to me, I'm always interested in learning about Henry VIII's wives. But because I visited Leeds Castle this week, which was home of Catherine of Aragon, and now I'm in Anne Boleyn's castle, Heber Castle, it's particularly fun for me to learn more about both of them. Catherine of Aragon was a Spanish princess. Her parents were Ferdinand and Isabella, the very rich and powerful king and queen of Spain. Most Tudor girls weren't given an education, but because princesses were expected to marry kings when they grew up, she was very well educated. When Catherine was 15 years old, she was sent to England to marry Arthur Tudor, the eldest son of King Henry VII. But five months later, Arthur suddenly died. This meant that Arthur's brother Henry would inherit the throne. The new King Henry asked Catherine to be his wife. This made her the Queen of England. So Catherine was a 16-year-old widow after Arthur died and was 24 years old when she accepted the proposal of the new King Henry VIII, a 17-year-old handsome, athletic, and powerful young man. In comparison to Catherine, Anne Boleyn's birth was unremarkable and, as was normal for this time, went unrecorded. It was likely that she was born in 1501 at Blicking Hall, Norfolk. Anne's father, Sir Thomas Bolin, <coughs> represented the king's in interest in Europe. Her mother, Lady Elizabeth, served as lady-in-waiting to Queen Catherine of Aragon. Hever Castle became the focus of Bolin family life in 1505, and Anne embarked upon an education not normally afforded girls of her standing. As she approached her teenage years, her father utilized his connections abroad, secured positions for his daughter in two of the most sophisticated European courts. She spent seven years in the royal court of France. While both Catherine and Anne were well-educated and confident women, in 1522, Anne returned to England, a sophisticated and fashionable young woman who made an immediate impression at court. However, she was not the favorite Bolin sister at this time, as Henry had already begun an affair with her sister Mary. That was short-lived, and Anne witnessed firsthand how quickly a woman could fall from the king's favor. I just learned that Anne was possibly going to marry Henry Percy, the future Earl of Northumberland, which would have made her a countess, but that marriage was denied permission by Cardinal Wolsey and Anne was banished to Hever Castle. She was very angry at the time, but not realizing she had an even bigger opportunity ahead. Around 1525, Henry firmly turned his eye towards Anne. Like a lovesick teenager, he began writing Anne adoring letters and showering her with gifts. Anne, who had just watched her sister be thrown aside by the king, had experienced her own heartbreak and chose to leave court and return to Hever. But Anne playing hard to get only made Henry grow fonder. His letters and presents kept arriving at Hever Castle. In one letter, he wished he could come in person in the place of his gift. Henry had never been refused by a woman before. Anne's time in France had equipped her with self-confidence, personal conviction, and piety. She would not be swayed into illicit affairs, so Henry would have to marry her. 
This is a copy of Henry VIII's signature with Anne Boleyn's initials enclosed in a heart. It says H seeks A B no other R. During the Christmas celebrations of 1526 here at Hever Castle, Anne accepted the king's proposal of marriage. However, she told Henry she would give him her heart, but would save her body until after they were married. This show of chastity was of little comfort to the current queen, Catherine. To her, Anne was not only a usurper, she was the scandal of Christendom itself. For the majority of their 23-year marriage, Henry and Catherine were happy. As queen, Catherine had proven herself to be loyal, popular, and capable. Henry entrusted Catherine with significant political influence, including, in 1513, when she was charged with the Regency of England whilst he fought in France. Catherine was heavily pregnant, but she rallied the English troops who repelled an unexpected Scottish invasion. Catherine was a powerful leader who oversaw the English victory at the Battle of Flodden. Unfortunately, Henry began to measure his queen's merit by her ability to produce sons. So the fact that Catherine had had six pregnancies, five of which resulted in either late-term stillbirths or infants who died very young, was catastrophic. Their only child to survive infancy was a girl, Princess Mary. So by 1524, Henry was no longer interested in Catherine, and she turned her boundless love and energy into raising her one surviving child. This is the wedding tapestry, believed to depict the wedding of Mary Tudor to King Louis XII of France in 1514. A Book of Hours is a scriptural prayer book of traditionally Catholic texts written in Latin. In this room are two very important prayer books brought together under the same roof for the first time in 500 years. This is a really important artifact. This is Thomas Cromwell's Book of Hours or prayer book. It was printed in Paris in 1527. This is Anne Boleyn's Book of Hours. This is Henry VIII's armorial tapestry. In 1528, the sweating sickness plague went around, and even though Anne became ill, she came here to Heber Castle and was nursed back to health. The king was frantically worried about Anne's health and was even more intent on marrying her upon her recovery and return to London. Newly determined to make Anne his queen, Henry now appealed to Rome to hear his case for an annulment of his marriage to Catherine. Catherine fought valiantly against this annulment by appealing directly to Rome. Henry began a seismic and unprecedented break with Rome, establishing himself as the supreme head of his own church. Both women's fates were now sealed. Anne left Hever Castle for the last time in 1529. As her star was rising to unprecedented heights, Catherine's was rapidly falling. Cruelly separated from her beloved daughter Mary, Catherine was banished from court by her once loving husband. To her last breath, Catherine refused to accept the annulment of her marriage and maintained that she was the one true queen and wife of Henry. This is a marriage plaque which celebrates the marriage of Anne Boleyn to King Henry VIII. In 1533, Anne finally achieved her long-held ambition by becoming queen and gave birth that September, but not to the son that Henry so desperately wanted, but instead to a daughter, Princess Elizabeth. Only three years later, just four months after the death of her once great rival Catherine, Anne was arrested on fabricated charges of adultery and treason and executed at the Tower of London on the 19th of May, 1536. This fun display shows the costume that Richard Burton wore when he played Henry VIII. These are costumes from the TV series Becoming Elizabeth. This is the bedroom where Henry VIII was believed to stay when he visited Heber Castle on several occasions. On the 15th of January, 1559, Elizabeth was crowned queen in Westminster Abbey. These robes here are the costumes that were made for the 1998 film Elizabeth, starring Kate Blanchett. This is the Long Gallery, one of the earliest long galleries in England, built in the early 1500s by Thomas Bolin, Anne's father. Long galleries were built to be a place where the family could exercise on the rare occasion that the weather outside in England was not perfect. 
This is the medieval council chamber, where the medieval occupants of Hever Castle would have done most of their living. They did most of their living here, including going to the toilet. And here is the guard robe, where they would use the potty and the waste would go straight down into the moat. While today I think moats are really lovely and I love to go and see the waterfowl, I don't think they would have been so lovely back in medieval times. Also on display here are some antique weapons and torture devices, like this man trap, and wooden halters, and this skull crusher. And here are the beheading axes and knives, rather gruesome collectibles on display here in the former home of Anne Boleyn, who died at the sharp end of one of these tools of execution. This painting here is of the Italian garden here at Hever Castle, and it was painted by Winston Churchill, who was a friend of John Jacob Astor, William Waldorf's son. Yesterday, I went to Chartwell, which was Winston's home, and visited his painting studio, where he probably painted this. Now it's time to go explore the gardens a bit. Starting with this floral display in honor of the recently crowned monarch. This waterfall is near the entrance to the Italian garden. I think this Italian garden is definitely my favorite part of the Heber Castle Gardens. This one looks like he's constantly spitting and this one looks like he has a really drippy nose. This is really kind of magical to walk through. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. So many of the places we've gone haven't had much in bloom, especially roses. So it's really nice to see there's still some roses blooming in this rose garden. This is the Heber Castle Rose. Isn't it cool that they have their own variety of rose? You know I love a lily pond especially when there are some magenta water lilies in bloom. And on the outer edge of this magnificent garden is this lovely lake. William Waldorf Astor, after he renovated and restored the castle to its former glory, built on this medieval wing and a medieval village behind the castle to help house his many servants and guests. Here's the archery area, which looks like a lot of fun. This is the water maze, which I've not seen one of those before. That is really interesting. You're supposed to walk around this path and get to the middle, the waterfall with the magenta flowers on top, without getting wet and falling in. Ian is going to give it a try because he says he's really good at mazes, but he just grimaced. So I don't know if that meant he almost fell in. Okay, so these fountains just start <laughs> springing up and spraying you. So Ian is going to get soaked if he doesn't get out of here. The right. <laughs> you see 
seen large chess sets at castles before, but not topiary chess sets made out of shrubs. That's pretty cool. In addition to the water maze, there is also a U maze. But we will not be trying this maze because it looks really hard and we've been here for hours already and we need to go get lunch. If only the U maze were this tall, then I could do it. This is St. Peter's Church, right on the outskirts of the castle grounds. This 14th century church contains the tomb of Sir Thomas Bullen. Like so many small parish churches in England, this one has very few worshipers on a weekly basis, but lots of visitors like us. So that's why we have to make a contribution to keep places like this preserved for future generations. This is the beautiful tomb of Margaret Chain, who died in 1419. Here lieth Thomas Bullen, Knight of the Order of the Garter, who died in 1538. Thomas Bullen, who was the father of Anne Boleyn, but that's the thing about last names back then, they changed a lot. That also makes him the grandfather of Elizabeth I. I hope you enjoyed this visit to Hever Castle. Please click here to see our visit to nearby Leeds Castle, former home of Catherine of Aragon, or this vlog of nearby Canterbury Cathedral. Thanks so much for watching this video and do something good in the world today.